Yeah. Now from obviously Fight Talk here, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Glenn Ellis, who's from Cold Blue here. We're at Bama 26 in the Free Arena in Dublin. Just going to grab a word with Glenn just to talk about the recent updates and changes and safety and measures taken at shows. So Glenn, thanks for taking us on talk. It's great to see you guys. Thanks for coming on to visit us. We're obviously the ones left on the outside. No one wants to come in and talk to the medics. They're afraid. You know? Well, they're too handsome not to be on camera. So we've got to get you on camera. So we want to just talk us through Fantastic. what's changed from your show from a year ago to two years ago to now. Huge, huge. I mean, what's gone on behind the scenes in the last three weeks between Safe MMA, between Jude from uh, Bama and every, all the trainers and the coaches, the fighters, we had a, a lot of hesitancy yeah, yeah, about two yeah. months ago with the new regulations that were coming in for pro fighting. Uh, I think what we've done is amazing. It's absolutely unbelievable. We have made MMA in Ireland one of the safest places to actually have it. It's a good fight. That's what it takes. From the pre-fight stuff that we've organised, from the new scans, the MRAs, the MRIs, taking care of the fighters, you know, it, it's been huge to what we have now on fight night. I would say two years ago, maybe what do we last year? Two years ago, the level of care cakes I wouldn't meet to what we have tonight. Mm. We can, if required, put a fighter into an induced coma here tonight. We have the level of skill with the doctors that we have, the emergency medicine consultants, specialists in emergency medicine. We've got advanced paramedics and paramedics. We've got advanced nurse practitioners with us as well. So not only have we got the equipment, but we've got the people to carry out the procedures if required. If somebody's airway, for example, gets completely crushed, we have that equipment to be able to look after. Mm. We prepare for the worst case scenario, and we have, that's what we have to be at. So essentially, you are like a, in lame's terms, you're like a mini hospital essentially here with all the correct doctors exactly. in place for the worst case scenario. Uh, exactly. We've replicated this room we're in now to the emergency department room that you would attend at the second oh, yeah. night. Yeah. We set it up in such a way that the doctors work in those same environments. They work in that environment tonight. They know where everything is, and it's on their expertise and their advice. They recommend what we put in this because they have to be certain and the reason we use these guys these emergency doctors is because they don't know what's going to come through the door any minute so they're on the ball all the time and ready to do a procedure if it needs to be so fighter gets knocked out in the cage yes from that point um, talk us through from in the cage to getting back here what exactly happens what's the procedure okay. So the KO happens in the ring, doctor and medic, advanced paramedic, enter the ring, take control of the fighter, make sure the airway is clear, quick neurological check, they'll call for help. We'll get a stretcher, we'll stretcher them in and carry them back to the room here. When they come back to the room, they'll be fully assessed neurologically, respiratory, in other words, their airway will be looked at, cardiovascular, the heart will be looked at, uh, and everything else will be have a quick check over from them. And then it'll be decided what has to be done at that point. If the fighter's sitting around talking to them, they still will be sent to the nearest CT scanner, the nearest emergency hospital, for a precautionary CT. Irrespective if they're sitting there talking to me and telling me their granny's name and when she was born, he still goes and gets a precautionary CT. And that's what all knockouts, TKOs, all knockouts, they all have to go exactly. and get we'll that We'll have to go and get that done. And it's for their safety. Okay. So we have four ambulances here tonight. Uh, so we have always one ambulance for a severe emergency, but the other three ambulances that are going to be used are used to transport those fighters with advanced paramedics in case something happens on the way to the hospital. So again, we're using frontline personnel who were used to a change in the patient and used to be able to react appropriately. And we've given them the equipment and the drugs necessary to stabilize that patient yeah. on the way to the hospital if needs be. Okay, so can you show us around the room yeah, a little certainly. bit yeah, of what yeah, yeah. You, that is being added essentially and okay. you know, what, what's so, used? So uh, the equipment out here on the right hand side is for wound care and it's basically for to dealing with fractures and any other injuries that could possibly happen. And I, I'd say we have enough equipment here to deal with the whole tree arena if it went under tonight, you know, that's how prepared we are. Moving over to the right hand side here, we've got our defibrillator, specialist defibrillator, which can do no more than your normal defibrillator can do. It can analyze certain rhythms. We can shock patients who, who require it for rhythm, certain rhythms as well. Below it then we have all our cardiac drugs for our cardiac arrest, um, sedation drugs in case somebody has a brain injury and we need to basically put them asleep. We have all them there as well. Behind us here on the wall is our emergency airway roll, standard emergency equipment, but we've also got specialist equipment in case you can't pass the tube past the throat. For example, if a fighter got a crushed airway here, we have a scalpel and a specific tool to go into the airway in case we need to take control of the airway there as well. This here then is other sedation drugs and any other drugs that we need to treat any patient that comes in here, even a dicky tummy, mm. we can treat here as well. Well, I, I, if I looked after me with a, with a sore back before as no, well. Yeah, well, then there you go. There you go. Well, there. There. But just, again, like, um, from the jump up, like, obviously we're on a big show here, Bama's biggest show in Europe, so people might be thinking it's well, well good for Bama, but on the lower shows, I was talking to you previously about this, cost-effective-wise, it's not that expensive, like, to it's have all expensive. this in place. So what, what are you looking at? Can I just say, show? see this setup here? We had this for 
Bam, or for uh, Battle Zone, Battle Zone yeah. last week. And the Battle Zone previous to that, we had the setup, you know. Uh, all the local promoters, better be a small show or a big show, choose Code Blue mm -hmm. uh, because this is what we bring to the show. Now, we're, we will do it for the safety of the fighter, and we have no issue with anybody else is able to provide the same level yeah. of care and service that we have to. It's, it's all about the fighter at this yeah. stage. So it's not just the case, it's the big show. Cost for this whole setup of this room here now tonight is approximately 400 euros. That's what brings this room to your event. You know, and the question I keep at getting asked is, it's expensive, isn't it? And I have to say, well, how much are your lights? How much yeah. is your DJ? How much is your music? How much is your event, your venue? You know, let's put fighter safety first yeah. instead of putting the big show. I do 100% agree. The show has to go on, and we want the big lights and all. But we need to start evaluating fighter safety. We've made a huge step when it comes to the world. And I've had a letter from the from the IMAF medical director this week. Um, basically praising what Ireland has done yeah. for the safety in Irish MMA and we need to carry that from the Tree Arena to the Trinity Sports and Leisure Complex to wherever it is in Cork and to wherever it is in Mayo and that's, that's what we're all about here. Well I think as well the standard now you can see it's going to become that Ireland and the setup that we have here is going to become the, the level, the, the you know, we've raised the level of fire safety here and it's where what shows are going to aim for and yes. that should be it. So thanks for taking the time to show us around this the room. Been there time and it's great to see you as well. Hopefully you don't have any uh, work to do because obviously, you know, but again, it's great to see it and uh, no yeah, thanks for taking the time. Good to see you again. Right,